VC, um, related to that question is, is how will this impact on the academic year 2021 then, if we are extending? Are there any uh, concerns about academic year 2021 if we are extending so far into next year? The, the, Russell, there will definitely be implications. We're working on scenarios and, and as you can imagine, because at the moment we, we don't know whether the lockdown, when the lockdown exactly will end and how it will end. So we're working on scenarios for, for the academic program. We work on scenarios for finances and fees, we're working on scenarios for residences so that when it gets clearer as to where government is going in terms of the lockdown, we know which scenario would work. But the registrar is online. Um, and I know that he's been um, preoccupied with the idea of student uh, student uh, recruitment, enrollment. Our system is uh, is is out there. We 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 are already recruiting students online, and we 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 are gearing ourselves up to welcome a new cohort of students in 2021. So we are being positive in terms of the fact that we will um, complete 2020, 2020 and admit new students in 2021. Royston, do you want to say something there? Uh, yes, I will. In terms of the timeline that has been described, and of course we know that that is not absolute. Um, it could change, and it could change because of reasons beyond our control. It has already been said that no one controls the timeline. The timeline is controlled by the virus. But if the timeline that we have worked out proves to, to be valid um, over the next few months, as much as this year will end later than we would ever have planned, and as much as there will be an impact on the start of 2021, by our planning, we will probably be in a position to commence lectures about mm. two weeks later than would ordinarily have been the case in 2021. So as things stand at the moment, the uh, planning for 2021 is on track. We um, will make the accommodations as necessary to recover 2020. Um, and we think our best case scenario is to be in a position to commence the 2021 year uh, two, maybe three weeks later than would ordinarily have applied in a regular cycle. Mm. VC related to that, so I suppose we should keep the register on, is the mm. question around graduations uh, and, and how, how will that take place under these uh, conditions? <clears throat> So the position on graduations is UCT at the time earlier in March because March is our, uh, our key um, graduation cycle month at, uh, at this university. We took a position at the time because it was enforced on us uh, to suspend the graduations that were scheduled for March. We are not in a position at this particular point in time to make any definitive comments about how grad will be dealt with into the future, other than to recognize graduation is important. It's important in the calendar of the university. It's important as events at the university, and we recognize it's important for our, our students and our staff and families, particularly the families. So it is something that is on the radar for consideration, but in terms of how exactly we will arrange it into the future will depend on the circumstances that, uh, that prevail over the next many months. And, and related to that, uh, VC and, and the registrar, is how the, there's also a, a question about how will we deal with admissions, particularly given uh, the role that the national benchmark testing plays in uh, admissions in certain uh, faculties? So, so the national benchmark tests are are an important part of our admission system. Uh, we use it for two purposes in some faculties to make admissions decisions, in other faculties to inform placement, and generally to uh, be helpful from the point of view of diagnostic information that it gives our academics in terms of um, what they need to uh, accommodate in terms of teaching practice based on the diagnostics that become clear through what the NBTs uh, generate. It is a fact that the, 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 the COVID-19 scenario has impacted on the planning and the testing uh, arrangements for the NBTs. Um, we are exploring options in terms of whether those NBTs can still be offered 
It might be the case that the timeline shifts. I think it's inevitable that the timeline will shift. It may well be the case that NDTs are going to be required to be written later on in the year. It is also the case, though, that we are giving uh, due consideration to the basis on which we make admissions decisions for students who come out of schools uh, on the basis of the of results indicators that we already have. So typically that would be grade 11 results, which everybody in grade 10 at the, in grade 12 at the moment would already have. We are not at this particular point in time saying that that will be the only basis on which we will make admissions decisions. But in fact, it is a, fa it is a reality that that is a, uh, a set of indicators that we already have. Um, it won't be new for UCT to look at uh, uh, final grade 11 results. Two years ago, we already started to do that to inform admissions decisions. We think that will become more of a factor, not only for UCT, but for all public higher education institutions in the country. And uh, we will we will continue to monitor the situation. We will continue to monitor what happens with the school calendar and timetable. Um, we anticipate that uh, the matric exam timetable is also going to be seriously affected. Mm -hmm. um, so we are live to that and we're watching those indicators all the time. Thank you, Registrar. And, and, and VC, there's a question also related more to the postgraduate study. Is mm. are we still allowing people to register for PhDs uh, when they need to obviously um, establish who their supervisors are going to be? Uh, how, how has that process been, been, uh, been handled un under these circumstances? Okay, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask Professor Sue Harrison to respond. But let me just throw a comment here and say, you know, if I were a PhD student at this point, um, there are there are areas of study that probably at this point people should be students should be grabbing the opportunity. If you're doing economics, if you're doing politics, if you're doing, you know, there's there's a, a research areas that you can get in now and this is the good time to start your PhD. So I would hope that in some areas of study uh, students actually see the current situation as an opportunity to grab and run with it for their studies Sue. Thanks um, Katie. Yes we are so we are accepting uh, uh, postgrad students at this stage just as we um, always do and I'd like to um, support what the VC says. Uh, particularly the early part of any um, PhD or postgrad study requires a lot of desk work to begin with where you need to look into uh, what's already known and uh, frame your questions and frame exactly which work you want to do. That's perfect to do right now. And with our students who are postgrad students who are studying at the moment, um, it's th this, for those who have a, a, a workspace and the tools that they need, this is also a great opportunity to um, be able to do that kind of work, but also to, to sit back and and look at what you've what you data you've already collected and things you already know, and do that really serious thinking about what it what it implies and how to move forward. So um, I think we can use parts of shut uh, of the lockdown period really well in postgrad in postgrad study. Of course, there are those students who also really need to get back to the lab, and we'll be looking to see how well we can do that and how quickly we can do that.